Welcome back to Up the Holler. If you haven't been following along with us, let me show you where we're at now. We finally got the old dozer into my garage shop area. And so now it's uh, under roof. We got heat in here to work in the winter time. Uh, hopefully we can get this thing resurrected. Um, uh, we got it put in here uh, about three about three days ago, and I fooled around with it a little bit the other day. I went ahead and removed the dash plate. Uh, I took a couple of these hydraulic lines out of the way just to have better access to get in the, here to this pony motor. And we're working on trying to get the uh, pony motor loose, get all the bolts out so we can pull it off here and start a tear down, see what all... What all it's gonna need, how bad it is, and all that. So, and let me just say, it took a little bit of doing to get this thing into the garage. Um, you know, I end up using my dump truck to uh, spin this thing around sideways. You know, because I had I had it setting straight down to woodshed, and we pulled it straight up here. But even when it was setting flat on the ground, I hooked the dump truck to it and tried to spin it. The dump truck didn't even want to spin it around. So I ended up having to jack the back end up with a bottle jack and then wrap a chain around and jerk it and make it fall over, you know, spin around like that. So anyway, uh, that's what we're working on this evening. I'm going to try to get this motor off here, uh, at least get as far as I can on it. And um, I'm not going to bore, bore you all with me trying to get the bolts out of it. It's got, I think it's got eight bolts holded on there. I've got three of them out already on the other side. I haven't touched any on this side. So I'm gonna fight with getting them out or, you know, try my best to get them out. And then uh, hopefully the next time y'all see this, uh, we'll be using the engine lift, pulling that thing up off there. Okay, we've started the teardown process on this old pony motor here. Uh, haven't really videoed a whole lot of this teardown because it's kind of time consuming. Uh, this engine is, as you can see, it's probably one of the nastiest engines I've worked on as far as caked up with grease and dirt. And you gotta try to dig all the bolts out and nuts to be able to get to them. But uh, I just pulled the heads off and we've got the carburetor off, oil fill off, um, exhaust manifolds off. So we're just going moving right along. Um, I need to get this back cover off right here. And uh, that way I can take this gear off. Get that gear off, then this thing will be able to set flat on the table instead of having to have it blocked up here. And uh, it'll be easier to work on. It's kind of kind of odd way of got, got to have it blocked up to work on it on the bench. So we'll report back when I get a little further. All right, just got the head off of it. There's the first look inside. Let me get a light here and try to shine down in it. Honestly, don't look too bad in there. I mean, it's a little dirty, but you know, that's to be expected. It's not real bad. Okay, I've been working with this thing, trying to get it, it's coming loose. You gotta get this off, this will expose all your gears to everything. 
just keep working it here. There it is. Okay. Well, looks like it gears gonna come right off there. I'd say that bushing in that is probably wore pretty good. Just pull right out. We'll get all this stuff cleaned up, of course. I mean, we're doing a total disassembly here, but that gear looks perfectly fine. I don't see any damaged teeth on it. You can see a little bit of, right here. This has been what was probably set in the bottom. It's got some rust right there. But now getting that gear off will let us be able to set this block flat down on the table. That's the biggest thing I wanted to get done here. Um, then uh, we can spin it around and get to the other side and get the flywheel off of it. And um, we pull this camshaft out and get everything else took out of it. And get it down to just a bare block. So I'm pretty pumped. I've checked this in play. Um, I don't have a, the, uh, I've ordered the book that tells you all the specs on this engine uh, from Caterpillar, waiting on it to come in. But, uh, you know, there is a certain amount of in play here you're supposed to have. And I, and I believe this here is probably pretty excessive. I think it's somewhere like between 10 to 20 thousandths, something like that. Um, this looks a little excessive to me. It looks like a little more than 10 to 20 thousandths. But we'll check all that stuff too. We'll work on getting the rest of the part down to just a bare block. We'll get it down to the bare block and we'll clean everything up real good. Then we can actually inspect the bores real good, mic them and see what we gotta do as far as boring it, bigger pistons or sleeves or whatever we gotta do to it. Okay, next day, out here fooling with this pony motor. Um, last night, I actually uh, tried to degreasing this thing up pretty good, scrubbing it. You know, got the biggest part of all the mess off of it. It's not as grimy and nasty as it was. Uh, then I kind of coated everything with some WD-40 just to help prevent flash rusting on everything. But now we can we can start checking all this stuff. Um, the uh, as far as like your bores, cylinder bores. Um, see how bad these valve seats are. I mean, I can see there's some crud stuck to them. I haven't you know looked at this stuff in depth yet because I was just focused on trying to get all the dirt off of it. Um, but I have found a few interesting things so far on the teardown of this. One thing being right here, you can see this, uh, right here beside this water jacket, you can see it's a different color right here. This has been repaired at some time. Um, I don't know when, if that could possibly be a factory repair, you know, if it were been, could have been a defect in that block when it was cast or what, but it's a pretty good looking repair, nice and flat and smooth. Uh, so there's that, and then probably the biggest concern is, and I'll show you the the bearings in just a second, but, you know, well, let me just spin this thing around so I can show you. Okay, so this is, of course, where our crankshaft goes through, and uh, I've already pulled the bearing out that goes in here, but what I found was this bearing that fits in here had spun, 
And, you know, if, if you uh, hear people talk about building engines and are working on repairing them stuff, you know, you'll hear people talk about a bearing that has spun. And what that amounts to is, is the uh, bearing that goes in here, you know, it's just like a sleeve of aluminum, essentially, is what it is, that goes in there and that gives a, uh, a softer surface or a wire surface for the shaft, the crankshaft to ride on and to rotate in without damaging this casting here. Uh, and you can see, you can see those three holes right here where my finger's at. You got one, two, and one in the middle. Uh, they're oil holes, but the one in the middle is also a retainer pin hole. And it's supposed to have a, a like a like, kind of like a dowel pin goes down in there. And that's what holds that bearing or bushing, if you want to call it that, in place. When I took this apart, that retainer was not in there. Now, I didn't find it inside the bottom of this block or anything like that. I don't know if maybe, maybe whoever worked on this before didn't put one back in it. Uh, I, I really don't know. So, what that means is the bearing had spun in here. So, that creates, that can, cre that can damage this. Okay, now it looks pretty good to rub your finger on it. It's nice and smooth and everything. Uh, I think I mentioned earlier that I have ordered a uh, Caterpillar book that gives all the tolerances and everything about this engine as far as what the size fits are supposed to be for the bearings and about anything you can imagine. It, it gives you all the numbers on that stuff. So we got to check this and see how out of round it is, how much it's wore. Because uh, I doubt that ordering a factory bearing is going to fit. It, it might, but I know the one that was here, I just pulled it right out, no problem. And these are supposed to be a press fit bearing. <clears throat> so that one had spun, and the back side of this, I'll just take in here and show you the plate that goes on the back. Uh, that would be under here. This is all the parts off of that engine. I've tried to stack them up here on this cart. But that's this plate here. This goes on the back side of that engine, and the crankshaft sticks through here. This bearing had spun also. And as you can see, it, the bearing pulls right out. Pushing, whatever you want to call it. And right there, the same setup, oil holes with a retainer. This one, however, does still have the locking pin in it. Right there, you can see the lock pin. But if you look at the back side, I don't know how well that's going to show up, but if you look at that lock pin, you can actually see some of the aluminum stuck around it. So it just means that when it, you know, it kind of sheared some of the aluminum out and let the bearing spin in this also. So... That's still not the end of the world. If any of you guys uh, that's watching this, you're probably into working on this old stuff. There's another guy, Squatch253 Squatch on YouTube. He does a lot of work on these pony motors. Works on these old Caterpillar dozers and stuff. So I've been watching a lot of his stuff. And I just watched him repair an engine that had this same exact problem. And of course now... He has, you know, lace and boring mills and things in his shop, and I don't have that here. So I'd have to outsource machine work on anything I do. But uh, it, it is possible to save this. Because all, all he done was like on this cap, he just trued it up, bored it out, made sure everything was nice and flat, and he turned a custom bushing to fit that. Same way with the other side. He just turned the custom bushing and fit it, you know, made it to fit. Uh, we'll still have to check the uh, the crank, make sure our uh, bearing surfaces are all equal, not marred up too bad. Uh, you know, we can take the crank and have it ground down to true up all the bearing surfaces on it. So that doesn't seem like that'll be an issue either. 
I've already contacted one machine shop about doing some of this stuff and they said they wouldn't have any problem doing any of that. So, but yeah, right now we're down to really, it's, uh, we've got it completely disassembled now and just trying to clean some of this stuff up so that everything can be inspected, you know, for cracks and stuff like that. Um, as this stuff just has, you can see, it's just got years of dirt and oil and grease caked on it and you can't really tell a whole lot about it. But uh, the main thing last night was, of course, the block itself. Wanted to get it cleaned up to where, you know, it's just not such a grimy mess and we can start checking things on it. Um, I was, the other couple interesting things that I found on this engine when taking it apart. Let's see. Where, uh, this piston here. Let me set you guys down here. Hold on. Okay, on this piston, we pulled out, uh, you know, I see, I can see some scratches here. Um, of course, I've not, I've not even cleaned this piston up yet, so it's still got some dirt and grit on it that needs cleaned. Uh, overall, it, it doesn't seem to be, I mean, you know, all the rings are there. They're not broken. They move. Um, it all looks pretty good. Uh, of course, you know, we'll be checking this here to see how bad these um, raw bearings are. You know, they, uh, they do have some wire in there. But, you know, that's no big to replace them either. But the interesting thing here was, was on these nuts that hold this together. Um, this one, of course, is not the correct nut that goes on it. It's supposed to have this castle nut uh, with a collar pin that goes through it. And this one here, as you can see, this castle nut was broken. Pull it off here. This one here, try to get that where you can see it. If it'll focus. See it split? That one was split all the way down. A chunk missing from right there on the side. So, you know, when I was down in the field trying to get this thing running, it's probably a good thing it didn't run. Because between, you know, just putting some of this stuff together, what I'm, I've seen here on Teardown, if I would have got this thing to run, there's a good chance it would have probably flew apart. <laughs> Especially something like this with a broke, uh, you know, connecting rod retainer nut and no collar pins and anything to help, help hold everything together. So there's just uh, that and, well, you know, all the... When, when I got to the clean in the bottom of this uh, block out, you know, I found a lot of metal shavings. And, of course, you know, that has to do with uh, where these bearings slipped and spun. And actually, the uh, crank had kind of rode on the back side of this uh, uh, block on the machine pit here and kind of ground it a little bit. But I actually did find pieces and remnants of the cotter pins. And uh, I dug them out of there and, you know, of course, took screwdrivers and dug all the other stuff out of the bottom of the block and then degreased it and scrubbed everything best I could. It's not 100%, but it's way better than it was. It gives us something a little bit better to, to work on. Guys, I'm going to wrap this video up right here. The um, pony motor, I'll just finish up cleaning on it. Um, as far as digging all the carbon and stuff out of the, from the exhaust valve ports, things like that. Um, you know, I've uh, checked the uh, bores for your front and rear main bearings and stuff, and they're uh, they're going to have to be remachined to true them up, and then I have to have uh, custom bearings turned to uh, be able to get that part lined back out. And I'll have to have the crank ground, too. Uh, and possibly might even have to have it welded up and reground to the uh, standard size so like I said I, I, that's about as far as I can make it on this other than just finishing cleaning everything else up on all the other components for the engine uh, but you know I don't, I don't have uh, I don't have a lathe or mill or anything to do some of this other stuff so I'll have to uh, 
outsource it to a machine shop that's uh, suited for working on engines that can do this type of stuff. So um, look forward to the next one. Hopefully we'll be taking the block to a machine shop to have some work done to it. So uh, give us a thumbs up if you like the video. I know it's not the best, but just trying to throw something together on what we got going on in, on the dozer itself. So, uh, yeah, give us a thumbs up and hit that like button. Thanks for watching.